<laughs> oh my, that that is amazing, and that's this is exactly what I have to say about VR all the time, pretty much. I don't think that, especially now during this whole human malware pandemic going on and the imposed lockdowns, it feels really amazing to be able to just chill at home and pick up a VR headset and just watch YouTube VR videos or stay in shape by playing Beat Saber or even exploring darker, like, you know, but more fascinating worlds in Half-Life Alex. But for that, you're actually going to require a PC as well. And this is exactly what has been my inspiration for this video. So how about we go on PC Part Picker yet again, which is exactly what I've done in one of my previous videos, where I went on there and did the unobtainium or the paper launch PC for you guys. And I hope, really hope you enjoyed it. Well, this time around, we're actually going to be taking a look at what are the required specs for playing PC VR titles with an Oculus Rift S, so not with a Quest or the Quest 2 in this case. And of course, I'm also going to be making a video on how you can pair that with your PC. But like I was saying, looking at the Rift S or some other headsets, uh, even the Valve Index, although if you own a Valve Index, then I don't know why you're watching this video because you probably have a lot of money and you could use that time to just go and build the beefy SPC you can possibly build, right? <laughs> Either way, I think now it's time to switch to the PC and see what we can build for ourselves. Let's go. We're now on the PC Part Picker website, as you can see, but before we actually start choosing our parts for our build, I think it's important to go to this article from Road to VR called How to Tell if Your PC is VR Ready, and I chose this one specifically because they're showing pretty much all of the most popular headsets like the Rift S, the Valve Index, the Vive Cosmos, and as well as others, and their minimum requirements, which is very important to see if your PC is VR Ready. Now, there are other things to consider as well, and they're also showing the Steam app for this, so definitely good to know, but we're only going to look at the minimum requirements in this case. So for the Rift S, you can see that they're requiring you get a GTX 1060 or an RX 480 at a minimum, and both of those cards are not brand spanking new at this point, and I'm pretty sure that you can find them for about 100 to 150 bucks on the secondhand market. And yeah, that, that should make you really happy. And when you go to PC Part Picker with me, you're actually going to see that pretty much all of the new graphics cards are a lot better than these ones. So rejoice yet again. Now the CPU that they're asking you get is either an i5-4590, so Haswell in this case, or an AMD Ryzen 5 1500X. Both of those CPUs are again pretty old at this point. I mean, Ryzen is a bit newer, but this one, oof, really old from Intel. Now, 8 gigabytes of RAM in this case, I would technically recommend you get 16 gigs of RAM because that's going to make your life a lot better when using your PC in general. And moving on to the Valve Index, you know, the top of the line experience in this case, you would have to get a GTX 1070, which is exactly what I upgraded from. So links to that video are going to be in the video description if you want to watch it. Now I own a 3070, by the way. And they're asking you get a quad core processor. Well, that's not very specific Valve, but I guess you could either get in this case the very same 4590 or Ryzen CPU, but <laughs> once we get to PC Part Picker, I'm obviously going to pick something that's better and that's technically a well not technically it is a hexa core processor that's what i have in mind at least now uh looking at the vive cosmos this one requires you get a gtx 970 or a radeon r9 290 both of those are very old trust me this one is on the maxwell architecture if i'm not mistaken and the very same processor but here you see that they're asking you get an fx 8350 which is really old i think this one is the bulldozer architecture now you can see four gigs of RAM as minimum, when in this case I would say don't, like step it up to at least 8, like that should be your bare minimum. And of course you have the Vive Pro and all of the others and they're pretty much uh, requesting it at the same um, specs. Now moving on to PC Part Picker yet again, I think it's time to start with our CPU and you're going to see that the most sought after PC, uh, CPU is actually the 3600 from Ryzen and this is a hexa-core uh, processor in this case, so 6 cores, 12 threads amazing processor and in any other case i would say oops sorry for that in any other case i would recommend you get an intel cpu because it has higher frequencies you know so uh, single core performance is better but in this case i would technically say get a ryzen 3600 and that's actually what i'm going to do over here and i'm going to tell you why so you can go for a B450 motherboard and then you can actually upgrade to a 5950X. You can't really do that right now as, as um, I'm recording this 
this video, especially not on all motherboards. You can do that on some Azure motherboards. So if you watch my previous video, you're going to understand why I'm saying that. But that's besides the point. Next year, you're going to be able to um, slot a 5950X inside of your B450 motherboard and you're going to have a very nice experience, assuming you have a, a decent motherboard. So moving on to that, um, as you can see, the Tomahawk Max, so the B450 uh, model, in this case, I was looking last time for the B450 model and I couldn't find it just because I had selected a 5600X, um, so PC Part Picker uh, wouldn't allow me to do that. Now, in this case, I would also say go with the very same B450 Tomahawk Max uh, motherboard, and the Max is just pretty much to show you that it works with, an, uh, with the 3000 series CPUs from AMD because they had to do some BIOS updates and whatnot. This one comes with a newer BIOS. I wouldn't call the latest BIOS because it really depends for how long this motherboard has been shitting, sitting on shelves. Whew. Uh, okay, uh, you can see that uh, you have some other more motherboards uh, as well that are a bit uh, cheaper and yeah, you could technically go for, for this one from Gigabyte as well, but I'm actually going to drop a link in the video description where you can see a tier list for the motherboards and the Tomahawk is, trust me, a really good one, especially if you want to upgrade further down the line to something like a 5800X or a 5900 or a 5950X, so the top of the line that AMD has at this point, at the time of recording this video. So let's just go with um, at this one and I'm going to try to make it just as quick as my <laughs> uh, last video, but if you have any questions, you can, of course, leave them in the comment section down below and I'm gladly going to answer them. Um, let's just take it in the order and go to memory in this case, why not? And for Ryzen 3600, I think that you can definitely go with this one, the Vengeance LPX in, in this case. This is a great kit that you can get, like I was saying in my previous video, this is exactly what I have in my PC as well. And 3200 speeds is going to be more than enough. You can look for um, pricing on some, some other kits. I have not actually sorted it for uh, other like eight gigs or whatever. So you can see, you can definitely find some that are cheaper, but do make sure it's DDR4 and all of that stuff. Um, I would just say go with that because it's actually really cheap at the moment and RAM prices and storage prices, both of them are technically going down at this point. So let's see how much cheaper they're actually going to get. But you know, we're heading to DDR5 right now. I already have an article on that. So if you want to subscribe or watch my previous content where I'm actually talking about that as well. So I expect prices to actually further plummet in this case. So going with storage, well, I would, I would technically say to go um, with anything you'd like in this case, but I think going with an NVMe SSD um, is going to make your life a little better, especially if you want to play uh, some other titles as well, not only VR, because um, trust me, there is no VR-ready SSD in this case. You can get pretty much everything also with, uh, you can go with a hard drive as well. And regarding that, I think you can also get a secondhand hard drive as long as it has not been abused by <laughs> by someone in this case. And uh, just like I was saying in my previous video, you can go with pretty much any SSD in this case. Um, I would say going with a K2000 um, from Kingston would be a pretty solid choice because those, especially here in Germany, are particularly cheap at this point. Same with Crucial. So. Pick whatever you want, and I would like to say that you shouldn't go for, well, you can, but don't go with um, something, I think this one, no, this is M.2 as well, there are um, some drives that are also SATA, and you don't need any cables, you know, it's the very same small form factor, but um, they have SATA speeds, and definitely don't go for that, because Hey, if you don't want cables, you actually want to get something that's speedier as well. But uh, I think we're going on a tangent right there. Let's just pick the, I think Crucial P2 would also be a um, good one to get as well. Let's just go for something that's a terabyte. Although you could also just go with 500 gigs because VR titles are not particularly uh, large. I would say. It really depends on the titles that you want to play as well. But I think Half-Life is like 80 gigs at this point. so. Definitely still acceptable. Now, let's wait on the graphics card and let's go to the case. And I would say that if you don't care about looks a lot, you know, you can go for something like a Focus G because this is very value oriented and you still get, uh, let me just show it to you, you still get 
um, two fans at the front, you know, a decent airflow because that's important to get in a case as well. However, if you want to step it up to something like a P300A mesh in this case, it's, yeah, a bit more expensive, but you're actually um, getting something that looks a little bit more modern, I would say, and it's really easy to build and especially if you haven't built your own PC before. I've built in this one for a friend and I've actually um, allowed him to play a little bit and he was like, yeah, this is pretty damn easy, Alex. <laughs> so definitely a go with that, but do keep in mind that you're also going to have to um, pay extra for some fans because I don't remember, I think it only comes with one fan in the back. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, you're left to choose if you want to uh, go with that. Um, you can also get some cases from NZXT, but not the best airflow in some of their cases. Sorry to say about that. Um, now going to the power supply, of course, in this case also, I would say get something that's about 650 minimum. Um, and that's not to say that your system with those specs is going to draw a lot of power. But like I said in my previous video, if you want to get any of the new cards and you want to get the beefiest components, I don't know, in three, four years from now, then you're most definitely going to like having a really good power supply that is uh, 80 plus gold rated and it has at least 650 and more modular uh, cables or at least semi-modular in this case because it's going to make life a lot easier when you're going to have to uh, cable manage and yeah just get uh, I don't know two or three um, PCIe uh, cables into it now uh, prices for power supplies are in going up I would say in this case especially because everyone is upgrading at this point so I'm going to drop a tier list in the video description just like in my old video where you can see what uh, pretty much the um, best bang for the buck um, PSUs would be in this case and don't cheap out on the PSU because <laughs> you're going to regret that um, what should we go for uh, I would say don't go with this one because it's already an aging um, power supply but still, it's it's from Seasonic, so you're still going to get decent performance. Um, I think we should technically go with... Oh, but that was an 80 plus bronze. Looking at the prices, man, they, they definitely did not go down. Um, let's sort this. PC Part Picker allows you to also sort it by watts in this case, so 650. Let's go for 80 plus gro bro <laughs> gold, not bronze. Um, <laughs> should have selected modular or semi-modular as well, but you can see you have this one, which is a semi-modular power supply from uh, Seasonic. This is their core GM series. I actually have um, the gold series, the, the Focus Gold series as well, fully modular. So yeah, I think technically you could go with that as well, or go with a bit more expensive and get... This is also still not fully modular, but you can pick and choose and see if you want to go with an EVGA card uh, um, PSU or with a Seasonic one. Let's just say I'll pick the Seasonic right now. It really depends. The prices fluctuate a lot, but like I was saying, get it from a reputable brand and do check out the tier list as well, or just ask me in the video description or in the comment section and I'll try to get back to you. Now, I think it's actually time to get to the graphics card. And the problem here is that Nvidia has released the 30 series graphics cards, which are a lot better, should I say, than the 20 series. And they're still planning to apparently add some more cards to the stack. So those being the 3060 Ti, the 3060, 3050, 3050 Ti, and some others. And I already discussed um, about them in my previous Mosh Bits episodes that I'm doing uh, on my channel. So this is here is I'm running. So if you are interested in that, definitely go and watch them. And with AMD, uh, they're also not uh, the luckiest because they also had some problems releasing their new cards. I mean, <laughs> it's a nice problem to have uh, being that they sold out instantly. So I guess um, they're making a lot of money, but you as a customer, you might not be able to get your hands on them that quickly. So for that reason, I would say try to keep it a bit low with the expectations uh, for a graphics card and don't go overboard because it might be that in three or four months, you're going to be able to get your hands on a very cheap 30 series graphics card because I wouldn't necessarily say getting a a 20 series graphics cards from Nvidia right now is the best choice and the same goes for AMD getting the RX uh, 5700 or the 5700 XT not necessarily the the best choice at this point you can still go for something like a 5700 I think 
Did they? I'm not sure if they discontinued them or... Ooh, they're pretty pricey. No, definitely don't go for it. I think the XT is like 350 should be, something like that. Yeah, 399 <laughs> We're definitely not going for that uh, for a more budget conscious. I mean, it really depends what we're going to end up with. So I would say something like a 1660 Super is going to be a really great value. Although when I'm seeing this and I'm thinking about the future um, 30 series graphics cards, so the 3050 or the 3060 and the 3060 Ti, those are definitely going to be in the same ballpark and they're going to be delivering a lot more performance than this one. But I would say going with something like a 1660 Super from EVGA is still going to give you good performance if you're really desperate and trying to get a PC right now. So. This is pretty much what we end up with right here, and you can see that the price is, I would say, pretty fine in general. Um, it's definitely not cheap, but if you also want to get yourself an Oculus Quest uh, or a Quest 2 in this case, you're in, you're going to end up somewhere in the neighborhood of 1100 or 1200 bucks. So, yep, you're still paying a lot for this experience, but you're definitely going to enjoy it. Now, I haven't chosen a, a CPU cooler, but you can go with an Arctic uh, 34 eSports right here, which is a great um, cooler right out of the line in, in this case. Um, didn't know where I was going with that, but go for this one. It, it, you can also find it for about 30 bucks. Like, just try to be conscious that you don't have the, the, the beefiest CPU in this case, so it's definitely not going to be a problem for that. Now, for the case fans, like I said, uh, you, you're going to end up with like 900 bucks if you go for the case fans from um, Arctic. Uh, those are the P12 series fans, so you can get a pack of five fans for like 20, 30 euros in, in this case if you live in Germany. So definitely interesting, but like I was saying, if you add... Um, the cost for the Oculus Quest into the mix or for any other headsets, then it's definitely going to get a bit pricey, but trust me, it's really worth it. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed my PC part picker. My, hopefully this video was very short and um, really informative for you. I know it seems like I picked just like, hey, you know, those are the top parts, but Honestly, those are pretty much the best parts, except for the graphics card, of course, which you can get for a PC build at the moment. If you happen to have more questions about building your own PC, then feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. I'll happily take your questions over there. But now that we're at the end of the video, I really hope you enjoyed it. So give it a like, get subscribed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.